Hi friends, welcome to What is Infertility? In this video, I'm talking about what defines infertility and what the top causes are. Stay tuned to learn. Hi friends, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about infertility. It is actually not one of my favorite words. I always call myself a fertility specialist over an infertility specialist because there's just a negative stigma associated with the word infertility. But that being said, it's a disease. The World Health Organization, the WHO, has classified infertility as a disease. This is great for us because in the U.S. this means that in some states we're able to get insurance to cover the treatment of fertility. Right now it is really different. Some states have complete coverage, it's called mandated. Other states, it's just completely up to the employer. But the more that we can get insurance companies to cover infertility as a disease that warrants medical treatment, the better we will be able to improve access to care. And that's huge because everybody deserves the right to have a family and infertility does not discriminate. So let's start at the beginning. Basic definitions. Infertility is defined as the inability to conceive after one year of trying or 12 months of trying if you're less than age 35. If you're 35 or older, then infertility is defined as six months of trying. The reason why these numbers differentiate is one, because it is a category to get you it to that next step of evaluation. And we don't wanna waste your time. So if you are older, you have less eggs, and less egg quality. But because when you get older, your time is a more valuable resource, we accelerate the workup. So that's the definition of infertility. 12 months if you're less than 35, six months if you're 35 or older. So what does it mean to be trying to get pregnant? So you're trying for six or for 12 months, and what this means is that you are not using contraception. So no condoms, IUDs, birth control pills, pull-out method, none of that stuff. It also means that you are having regular periods. This is one of my number one pet peeves, is that when women come to me after trying to get pregnant for three years, but their periods are so irregular, they're only ovulating every three or four months, if at all, they're not having regular periods. If you don't have regular periods, don't pass go. Go right to the fertility specialist or the OBGYN because you are not ovulating. So you're not even giving your body that chance to have an egg release or to get pregnant. If you have been trying to get pregnant for six months or 12 months, depending on your age, and you have regular periods that are predictable and you're having unprotected sex, you are trying. Now, if you're having severe pain with intercourse or if your male partner is unable to achieve an erection or ejaculation, then you're not able to fully attempt pregnancy. And again, just like if your periods are irregular, you need to come on in for an evaluation. Now, presuming that you are having unprotected sex and you're not pregnant, the thing to know here is that your chance of getting pregnant per month largely depends on your age. But if you're 35 or younger and your chance is around 20% per month, once you've exceeded six months, you're already outside the norm of what would be normal for most of your friends. This to me and how I say this to patients is that means you don't have to wait till the magic one year mark to come get an evaluation. What if there's something going wrong? So one of the top questions I get asked is when is it too early to see a fertility specialist? Never. It's never too early. It's never too early to get an evaluation. So the common statistic is that infertility affects one out of eight. One out of eight women will suffer from infertility. Current studies are actually showing that there's an increased prevalence of infertility closer to one out of six. Either way that you look at it, this is something that is impacting so many people. What is involved in a normal infertility evaluation? I think this is huge to understand because there's a big barrier to even wanting to come into my office. Nobody wants to see me, that's the reality of my job. But breaking down what the new patient visit looks like really correlates with what the top causes of infertility are. So the first one is that we're gonna get a detailed history if you come into my office. We're gonna sit down right across from each other. You're gonna be fully dressed in your clothes in a consult room. I'm gonna ask you questions about your history, about your periods, how often they come, how regular they are, do they have spotting or bleeding or pain? If you track your cycles, I love you because I love that. That's so helpful for me, you bring that with you and then we can look at it. I'm going to ask about your past smear history, history of STDs, if you've had surgery in the past, any pregnancies. I'm also going to ask about other medical problems, medications you're taking, have you had surgery in the past, and wanna get a good idea of what your time trying to get pregnant looks like for you. I'm gonna ask some history of your partner, medical problems, difficulty with erection, ejaculation, prior kids, have they ever tried to have kids before? 
things like that. From that history, I'm usually able to ascertain if you're having regular predictable periods, which is the number one sign that you are ovulating. So if your periods are regular, you are ovulating. And that's going to rule out one of the top causes of infertility, anovulation. Anovulation is a failure to ovulate. This can present as no periods or irregular periods. So if your periods are irregular or absent, we're going to do some basic blood work and hormones to look for some of the top causes of that. We're going to be looking at FSH, LH, estradiol, TSH, which is your thyroid hormone, and a prolactin. That's the basic evaluation for irregular absent periods. Then we're gonna check your ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve relates to how many eggs you have left. Importantly, ovarian reserve does not cause infertility. Should I say it again? Ovarian reserve does not cause infertility. But if your ovarian reserve is low, you have less time to try to get pregnant. And if you're just starting your family planning journey or you want multiple more kids, that may be hugely impactful in what we choose to do. We check ovarian reserve by twofold. So we can check ovarian reserve by measuring your AMH and by doing a vaginal ultrasound and getting an antral follicle count. I do these tests in all of my new patients because I love data. I want all the information so I can counsel you best on the true question, what is your goal? And I like the long-term goal. What would your family look like in an ideal world? Then we're gonna talk about your anatomy. Normal anatomy for a pregnancy includes a normal uterus and normal fallopian tubes. So your fallopian tubes need to be open, that's called patent, and the inside of your uterine cavity needs to be clear of obstructions. So no fibroids, polyps, scar tissue, or abnormal uterine shapes. These things can all make it harder or impossible to get pregnant. There are multiple different ways to evaluate your anatomy, but what I do is I combine a vaginal ultrasound, which also gives me the antral follicle count. It also shows the muscular portion of the uterus. So things like uterine fibroids are clearly seen on this but the ultrasound does not show your fallopian tubes and it does not show the inside of the uterine cavity. The inside of the uterine cavity, it's a potential space. So imagine your uterus is compressed like this. You can't really see what's inside. So we like to fill it up with water or dye or contrast, push those walls apart. Then you can see if there's a projection of something abnormal pushing inside. There's different ways to do this, but the test that gives us the most information for an initial diagnostic standpoint is called an HSG or a hysterosalpingogram. For the HSG test, we're looking inside your uterus and in your fallopian tubes. I describe this as a pap smear meets an x-ray. Speculum goes in the vagina, small catheter goes to the cervix. A small amount of dye will be injected into your uterine cavity, which will push the uterus apart so we can see that inner triangular shape and the dye should move through your fallopian tubes and exit. We get immediate results. I do this test myself in the office, just very quick in and out, and we can get an idea of if your uterus and your fallopian tubes are normal. Very, very helpful. The HSG test does not show us the ovaries that's seen on ultrasound. So really you need both of these tests together to get the best assessment from a diagnostic standpoint. Importantly, there can be clues in your history that something is abnormal. History of chlamydia specifically, so prior STD infection, that can damage the fallopian tubes. So can endometriosis, so severely painful periods or history of having endometriosis diagnosed, that increases the suspicion that there could be something wrong with your fallopian tubes. Heavy or abnormal bleeding increases the chance that you could have a polyp or a fibroid inside your uterus and complete absence of your periods is a risk factor that you could have scar tissue if you've ever had prior surgeries. This can be from prior DNC procedures, abortions, sometimes IUD placement, even though that's extremely rare. The last part of an infertility evaluation is evaluating the semen analysis if you're in a heterosexual relationship. When you're in a heterosexual relationship, we need both parts of the couple. This is not just a disease of one person. At my clinic, we evaluate you both. We're not going to do treatment until we have information on both of you because it's not fair for you to just take all the burden and presume that it's only you. We want to know everything you're dealing with. For the semen analysis, this is looked at to get concentration of the sperm, so how many sperm there are per milliliter, the motility, so how the sperm moves, and the morphology or the shape of the sperm. The semen analysis reflects both the hormone production of men and their environment. So we always talk about optimizing environment if we need to, avoiding excess heat to the testes, looking at diet and other environmental toxins to try to see what can give you the healthiest sperm count possible, especially if you're coming back with some abnormal parameters. Importantly, sperm is not like ovarian reserve. It changes constantly. Every 90 days, you have a completely new semen analysis. That's the life cycle of sperm. So if you have an abnormal semen analysis, depending on how severe it is, sometimes you can try to make lifestyle changes or small medical changes and see if you can get an improvement in sperm quality. Sometimes, depending on maternal age, that's not worth it. Meaning if you're older and your time is precious, you don't want to wait three to six months to see if the sperm can get better. Because what if it doesn't? Then you've just wasted time. So you can see that when we are looking at this global picture, I'm trying to get from you, your medical history, do you ovulate? 
How many eggs do you have left? Is your anatomy normal? What is your partner's sperm like? I also want to know, what is your goal? When it comes to having kids and having a family, what is your goal? This is hugely important as we try to plan out the big picture because what we do now may change depending on how many kids you want, how close you want them together, what your life would look like in the ideal fashion. I'm the first person to admit life isn't perfect. You wouldn't be sitting in my office if things went as planned. That being said, we're at the point now where we can make choices for what's going to suit us the best and I need all the data. I'll also just tap in here, if you're in a same-sex couple, Yay, that's fabulous. If you're two same-sex women, so if you're a lesbian couple, I usually recommend doing the full evaluation on both of you before you purchase sperm if you think in your big picture plan, perhaps at some point, you both may want to contribute. So if you think her eggs my uterus, she carries, I carry, whatever you're thinking, if both partners are contributing, I want to evaluate you both from the beginning because the truth is we may change who goes first or what our plan is depending on the results that we get. On the other hand, if you know this is the person who's going to be her uterus, her eggs. I am the support person. I support that also. Then we'll just do the evaluation on the person whose body is going to be impacted. I want to end by saying infertility is a really delicate time and I get it. I love being a fertility physician because I love the close connections that I get to have with my patients. I can't even tell you how much it means to me to see pregnancy and baby photos on Instagram and social media sites of these babies and these moms that we worked so hard to get to that point. It means the world to me. And I want to help make all of your dreams of what your family looks like come true. We all do. Every fertility doctor is here for you. That being said, infertility is very, very personal. If you do not connect with your doctor, change. If you don't connect with your clinic, change. If somebody's not communicating well with you, change. You deserve to know what we're doing, why we're doing it, and how to get a hold of us. If you are not getting the information you need, the support, the education, the resources, the communication, then it is completely fine to change. You need to trust in the journey. It is a two-way street and you need to find what's going to be the best place for you. Guys, thank you so much. Feel free to leave any infertility questions that you have and I'll try to get to them. Other topics that you'd love to see in future videos, I would love to hear. It would mean so much to me if you would subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. That helps me just kind of get more content to more people. And that's really what I'm trying to do here educate women and empower them by helping them understand their bodies. I appreciate all your support and love. As always, you can get more information on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD or the podcast as a woman. You can search it in all the major places, iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, and it will be there. It's been going on for over a year, has over half a million downloads, plenty of fertility topics there. I'm going to be bringing them to you here on YouTube as well. Thanks guys.